One of the famous museums in the city is the Nikola Tesla Museum. Tesla had Serbian parents and he was born actually in what today would be considered Croatia. But come with us as we explore his museum. He was able to draw in the sand plans for the invention which was to make him famous. Rotating magnetic fields created by an alternating current. Over the following two years, while working in a branch of Edison's company in Paris in Strasbourg, Tesla completed his visualization to the end of the experiment and made the first working models. He even made his first attempt to commercialize his motor. But at that time, it was difficult to persuade European entrepreneurs to accept new ideas. And, at his supervisor's urging, he finally decided to leave Paris and try his luck in America. Tesla arrived in America in 1884 on the RMSS City of Richmond with four cents to his name, a few songs and calculations for a flying machine. In his pocket, he had one more valuable letter, one of recommendation from Charles Batchelor to Thomas Edison. In it, Batchelor wrote, I know two great men and you are one. The other is this young man. Tesla's first job was to improve Edison's dynamos, and he worked at this job with the real passion and commitment of a young man who had just one goal, to interest Edison in inventions in the area of alternating currents. But the goals and methods of the two inventors were too far from each other, and it was inevitable that they would go their separate ways. It didn't take long for Tesla to find investors for his revolutionary invention. With the help of lawyer Charles Peck, he established his own laboratory in Liberty Street, New York, in 1887. There, he finally made true prototypes of the first induction motors and applied for patent protection for them. After giving a brilliant lecture at the American Society of Electrical Engineers, Tesla contacted George Westinghouse, owner and founder of the company which bears his name. Westinghouse decided to buy the patent for Tesla's system for the production, transmission, and use of polyphase alternating currents. This was a dream come true for Tesla, but also the beginning of new temptations. Tesla found himself in the middle of a ruthless fight between Edison and Westinghouse for market dominance. In popular science, this was known as the War of the Currents. Edison tried in vain to prove the value of direct current. The benefits of Tesla's alternating current system quickly became obvious, especially for the transmission of electricity over long distances. This removed the last hurdle to its universal adoption. The Chicago success helped Westinghouse to obtain a contract to build a hydroelectric power plant at the Niagara Falls. This historic event was perhaps the most significant step towards creating a second industrial revolution. Of the 13 patents used in building the Niagara power system, nine belonged to Tesla. Suddenly, Tesla was very famous. His inventions, discoveries, and visions were widely accepted by the scientific community, both at home and abroad. They were published in scientific magazines, daily and weekly newspapers, and in highly credible literary and intellectual reviews. During the last decade of the 19th century, Tesla became a superstar, a celebrity, and a very important person in New York's upper echelons. Prestigious American and European universities were falling over themselves to present him with medals and honors. After a lecture to the Royal Society in London in 1892, Tesla was advised by leading English scientists to concentrate his enormous creative energy on one problem. More and more, Tesla focused on the problem of meeting humanity's energy needs. From May 1899 until January 1900, Tesla stayed in Colorado Springs. There, in an unattractive timber laboratory, he undertook fascinating experiments with an oscillating transformer of 12 million volts and discovered resonant frequencies of the Earth, which established stationary waves. He believed he had found a mechanism which would transmit energy and information around the world. Later, writing to his most important sponsor, J.P. Morgan, he said, 
I have found the new philosopher's stone. My discovery is so revolutionary that it will impact almost all social values and relations. On his return to New York in January 1900, Tesla published spectacular photographs from Colorado as part of a visionary article about the future of the global society entitled, The Problem of Increasing Human Energy. Soon after this, financed by J.P. Morgan, he began to build a laboratory, the famous tower in Shoreham, Long Island, close to New York. The building, 60 meters tall, which he named the increasing transmitter because of its geometry, mechanical, and electrical features, was a tower which corresponded to characteristics of the Earth and represented a similarly tied resonating system. He intended this system to support wireless emission and transmission of information and energy to any point on the Earth. But his plans were to come to naught. J.P. Morgan suddenly withdrew all his funds and refused to finance any further work by Tesla.